Hey, it's Jared. Today, we're going to take a look at cases for the Galaxy Z Fold 5. The Z Fold 5 is the latest Galaxy phone in 2023 from Samsung, and it's a great phone, but it needs a case. Though it's great, it has a lot of potential areas for damage. I mean, you've got the front screen, which I think is great. You've got the hinge that is nice and strong, probably doesn't necessarily need protection, but it's nice that you can get cases that have protection. And then the back of the phone as well. And something that's larger like this, that you're gonna be utilizing in different ways, it's nice to have a case that can protect your phone. Okay, we're gonna look at several cases, so I'll make sure to include timestamps. There's also links in the description below, so you can check out the cases, see the pricing and the color options because some of them do come in different color options. So make sure to check out those links in the description. First case we're looking at is from Spigen and this is the Galaxy Z Fold 5 case from them. It's a great case. I've been utilizing this case for a week and I've spent a little bit of time with some of these cases, the ones that I feel like I have the most success with in the past because this is not my first time reviewing cases for this type of device. It is though for the five. So what I like about this case is that it has a lot of adhesive all the way around it to hold things in place. Now with this type of phone, having a case on it is a bit tricky because you've got a really thin area here on the left-hand side and it needs to have adhesive to actually stick to the phone. And they did a good job with providing a lot of adhesive and they also provided an extra set of adhesive in the box as well. So you've got an extra set of adhesive strips in here, which I think is great. That's something that's new this year that didn't happen with a lot of these cases that came for the Fold 4 and previous models. People want to take a case off to clean their phone. Once they take the case off, they can't get the case back on because they don't have adhesive. This case provides good protection all the way around. As you can see, protection for the camera module, nice cutout area for access to the buttons and the thumbprint reader or fingerprint reader. It provides protection. I end up fidgeting with stuff like this. I'll be sitting there just flick in the thing, which I'm sure is going to damage it eventually. But I like having protection uh, for the hinge. And then when you open the case up, there's a little bit of a bump back here that you can use to kind of rest your fingers on. It's not very big. We're going to look at a case that definitely has a much larger bump. It's not very big though, but it is good enough to where you can kind of rest your fingers on it and it helps you hold the phone one-handed. That's important. When I'm not using a case on this phone, it gets tricky and it makes it very easy for me to drop the phone. And I don't want to do that. So having this little ridge here is great. And there's a little bit of a grip to it as well. As you could probably see, the grip definitely helps. Overall, a great case. This case from Spigen, I like it. It's a shame that I'm going to have to take it off, but I'm glad that it comes with an extra set of adhesives because I may be putting it back on. The front portion is the only portion that needs the adhesives. The back portion of the case will pop right off. And so you just have to be careful because you don't want to open your phone and put pressure on your phone that you don't need to be putting pressure. But it's very easy to get these cases off. What I do like about this case is it also has additional padding and protection in here, which is great. So let's go ahead and peel this off and we'll look at our next case. The next case is from Subcase. This case is very durable. This is the UB Pro, which is one of their larger cases that they make for a variety of different phones. And it provides the ultimate protection for your device. So it's great because it provides all around protection with a lot of edge protection around the corners of the device. And when you fold that device down, you can see it does get significantly thinner. It has a cap on the end as well. And that cap allows you for storing your S Pen, which is great because if you have an S Pen, you need an easy way to store it and you can store it right in the side here, which is awesome. And it also provides protection against the hinge so that hinge is well protected. It adds a bit of width to your phone, but it's still not as wide as say like the Samsung S23 Ultra. So it's it's not that bad. What this also has is a built-in screen protector, which is great because I feel like this outside screen needs a screen protector. And with this case having a built-in screen protector, that's just great. It has kind of a, like a, a carbon fiber type of fiber look on the side. The fingerprint reader, of course, and the lock button's exposed, but you've got 
got volume buttons here, which are easy to use and responsive. And overall, I do really just like this case. I talked about with the last case having something to hold on to. This case really has a lot to hold on to, as you can see here, which is great. So if you're wanting to one hand use your phone opened quite a bit in this open mode, then having this extra grip on the back or just something to hold on to is great. And I don't feel like I'm going to break that. I mean, I could squeeze this quite hard. I'm not going to hurt this. It's a great feature to have this for storing your S Pen and also for having something extra to hold on to. Now, this case also has a kickstand that you can open up and that kickstand will work in a portrait mode like so. You can open up the phone and it's going to work in a landscape mode. That's the thing that might be a little bit tricky at times with this device, rotating it into landscape mode. I mean, it does work relatively well. Some apps seem to work a little bit weird in this orientation, but overall, uh, I haven't had any odd experiences utilizing the phone at its side like that. Typically, I'm using the phone in this orientation, but you can rotate it into landscape. And this case also works good at an angle as well, not necessarily utilizing the kickstand, but utilizing the cover that goes over the side of the phone. It kind of kicks your phone up at a little bit of an angle. And I really like utilizing it in this way when you're utilizing the dual screen or you're viewing content, just kind of kicking it at a little bit of an angle. I mean, it just, it's great. Great. And when your phone is sitting out like this, people look at it and they're like, what on earth is that? They're not even thinking that it's the Galaxy Z Fold. It catches them off guard because they're just not used to seeing a device in an orientation like that. So the UB Pro provides excellent protection all the way around. It's a great case, albeit a bit thick, and it does add a lot to your device. So that might be the factor for you that keeps you away from this case. But if you need something that adds a lot of protection and really adds a lot of functionality to your device as well, this is probably the best case for you. Also attached with a little bit of adhesive, but not as aggressively as the last case because it has the built-in screen protector. It has protection going all the way around, so it just does not need as much uh, as far as adhesive goes, but it still does need some adhesive. There's a couple little pieces right here on the top and a couple little pieces down here on the bottom. The UB Pro, a fantastic case. Let's take a look at a case from Gooseberry. Gooseberry makes a wide variety of cases and they have a ton of different options, but we're gonna take a look at their more traditional case here, which is just a plastic cover case, so very slim. This is probably one of the more slim cases that we're gonna look at. It has adhesive on the back side too, so we'll pull that adhesive off and get those little adhesive strips off so that this will attach and stay on our device. We definitely want that. Because of it being a thinner, more slimline case, it's gonna need that so that this doesn't pop up and you don't get debris and stuff back in there. That's an issue that you would run into. And we'll go ahead and pull this piece off as well and there's a piece here and also a piece on top. And then we'll put this on like so, snapping it in and making sure that adhesive is connecting. Awesome. That is a very thin, slim case. And so if you're not wanting to add much to your device, then this is a great case. It doesn't have any coverage on the hinge, which is fine. This case does not add much to the device at all. And I like that about it. It doesn't even really protect the camera humps. You know, the camera modules stick out just a little bit. Could be concerning if you're wanting protection for that. But if you're just wanting a case that slimly protects your device without adding a lot of bulk to it, this is definitely going to be one of those cases. I will say unlocking the device, there just isn't enough cutout room for my thumbprint. I'm trying to unlock the device there. I had to put in my code because, you know, after a couple of times it failed on me. And so let's see if I can get this to unlock. Okay, I got it to unlock. So I just had to kind of dig my thumb down in there a little bit. That was a little concerning at first to me. Let's see if I can do it because that's a very slim spot in there for me to get my, oh yeah, it worked just fine. So you're definitely gonna have to pay attention to the angle of your thumb and kind of getting it in there. It's just not well thought out in this portion of the case for the fingerprint reader, but you're gonna run into those issues with really slim cases that prioritize being slim and not taking up much space and not adding much to your device over form and function. And so 
I like that about the case, that it's super slim and it just doesn't get in the way. Now we're looking at a case from Caseology. Caseology makes great cases. Um, looks like this one's also coming with an extra set of adhesives. And so I'm really happy that these case companies are doing that this year because, you know, if you need to take this stuff off of your device, it sure would be nice to be able to put it back on at least once because of all these little adhesive strips that are required. Now, this case is a bit intense with all of the little adhesive strips that it has, but I guarantee it's not going to come off. You're not going to have any issues there. So let's go ahead and get the outside front cover on. We'll just press it into place. And what I love is that these are so easy to put on and it's not scary to install them at all. Because of the adhesives, you might think, okay, if I even get that on there remotely lopsided, I'm going to run into issues and this case is just not going to be on there right. I try to take it off and then I'm going to have to use the extra adhesive strip. No, you're not going to run into any problems there. These go on so easy and really come off easy as well. I feel like you could probably take most of these cases off a couple of times without even having to go and utilize that second set of strips. All right, so let's take a look at this case. What I really like about the Caseology cases, this is a common design that they have on a lot of their other cases, and it just looks great. Very premium, nice textured feel, it gives you a little bit of something to hold on to and adds a little bit of definition to your device. And then it just ends down here. They've got their minimal branding and it's just overall a nice looking case. And on the front, very minimal, just ridge around the outer edge protecting that screen. No protection over the hinge, but that's okay. And overall, just a nice looking case, about as minimal as you can get. And they have cut out a proper cutout here for your fingerprint. So I'm not gonna run into any issues there like I did with the Gooseberry case. Don't wanna knock the Gooseberry case. It still worked just fine, but I have to say a little bit more room for your fingerprint is nice. So the Caseology case is excellent. I really like it. It's got some ridging here for gripping and the, that is really gonna come in useful when you don't really have anything extra to hold on to. Having a little bit of this ridging here just to hold on to definitely makes me feel a little bit more secure utilizing this case. So overall, I'd say so far, this is my favorite slim case as far as the slim cases go. I like the design, I love the protection, and I love the simplicity of this case without adding a ton to the Fold 5. Now let's install a case from iBlazon. This is a very similar case to the UB Pro case that we looked at, very similar. And so the install, everything that I probably have to say is gonna be pretty close to the same about this case as the UB Pro. I like it though. It's a great case, very much similar to the UB Pro. Has a built-in screen protector, and so we will peel off the screen protector and then also peel off the adhesive protection. And so we'll go ahead and peel that off here and just be very careful not to get anything on it, which I did. What in the heck is that? A, a little bug or something? Something got on there. Thankfully, it came off really easily without smudging anything. So you definitely wanna be careful installing these because once you get it uh, installed, if you've got fingerprints or something on there that you got while you were trying to install this, uh, it's gonna be extremely noticeable underneath that screen protector. So let's take a look at this case. So the first thing that I am noticing is as a difference between this iBlazon version and the UB Pro is the grippiness. There is some intense grip on the side of this case, which I like. I feel that and I notice it and it does make it a little bit easier to hold on to. There's a good cutout here for the fingerprint reader, although it's not totally centered in there, which is a little bothersome to me, but probably not such a big deal because it does give me plenty of room to get my thumb in there. So that's not really that big of an issue. Opening it up, still plenty of room. We've got that big door on the back that acts as something really nice to hold on to. And it also provides storage for the S Pen, just like the UB Pro case does. Widens the phone quite a bit because of that door on the side or that hinge protection, but I like it. And it has a similar cutout so I could see the Samsung logo, or of course, if I had the S Pen in there, I can see the S Pen. Love having the screen protector built in. That definitely makes me feel better about this device and the protection that it provides. Lot of protection on the back of the device here. We also have a kickstand on the back so we could pop that kickstand out and lock it into place and view in portrait mode or go into landscape mode or we can open up the device and go in landscape mode or we could put this 
kickstand down and use the hinge just like we did with the UB Pro. I have to say, like if I had to compare the two, if I was comparing the UB Pro to the armor box from iBlazon, I'd say maybe due to just a little bit more of a rugged look and this grippiness on the side, I might consider the iBlazon over the UB Pro, but I'm pretty sure they come from the same company or the same manufacturer because they are very similar cases here, the iBlazon and the uh, the UB Pro from Supcase. I think it really just comes down to stylistic choices and what you tend to, to like as far as the look goes. But I have to say, this is a great case for providing tons of protection for your device. And if you're needing a case that provides that kind of protection, either the iBlazon or the UB Pro can't go wrong with either of those. So the last two cases that we're going to look at are the cases directly from Samsung. And the reason that I'm doing them last is because I'm probably going to go with one of these two cases. I have the S Pen case and I also have the standing case with strap. Now the standing case with strap was one of my favorites from last year with the Fold 4. I loved having the strap on the case and the strap made it very nice and easy to hold on to the device and to utilize the device, but there was no way to keep an S Pen on it. And I didn't mind that last year because the S Pen was so large. It was such a big S Pen and it took up so much space. I didn't really like having the S Pen with me. I wanted something smaller. And so I didn't carry the S Pen with me very often and I loved using this case. So I'm not gonna take the adhesive off of it yet because I'm gonna go back and forth between these two cases just a little bit and try them uh, before I decide uh, ultimately on which case I'm gonna go with. Let's take that strap out and we'll look at the differences here. We have a stand that also can be traded out with the strap. And that's what's cool about this. This year's strap is very slim lined and I love that about it. It slides out. This is different than last year's strap. So we have this kickstand here that pops up and we can utilize this as a stand. Phone will stand up in a portrait mode. We can also open up the phone and the stand works in all orientations, which is great. I can even fold the phone down a little bit and the kickstand works really good. And I feel secure about that. I mean, this is an appendage that's sticking off the back. It's not something that folds out and has two points of contact like the other cases that we were looking at. It's just one kickstand, but I feel secure with it. And I like that feature, but you can snap this right out and utilize the hand strap. And last year, I really fell in love with the hand strap on the Fold 4. Now this hand strap is a little bit different, and so it folds out and is very flimsy and rubbery, and you just basically slide a finger in there and it provides a way for you to hold onto your device. That's very important when you're utilizing your device with the screen open because it takes a lot to hold on to this device. But I'm not 100% sure I like this, the way that this works. It's very flimsy, which is fine. And so I, you know, I've got my hand in there and I feel relatively secure, but it's flimsy and the phone can move around a bit. And I really have to hold onto the phone and put a lot of pressure on my pinky finger down here to utilize that strap. And so I'm right now I'm missing last year's design. Last year's design I think was better, even though this is much more slim and sleek. And I, I feel like engineering wise, this is a better option. Usability wise, I like last year's strap a bit better. And so this probably is not going to be the case that I go with because I'm just not enjoying the strap on this device. It's definitely cool, but for me, I just, I don't like the way that it feels in comparison to last year's. I may revisit it. I don't know. You're going to have to follow me on Instagram. I've got a link to Instagram down below. I'll definitely post some photos and some Instagram stories and share that stuff with you guys. But let's take a look at the last case, which is the S Pen case. This is the case that houses an S Pen with the new S Pen design that's very slim and that new S Pen design doesn't take up as much space as last year's, which I think is great. So the S Pen now just pops right out of the back. You just slide this little button down and you've got your tiny little S Pen, which I like. I love the fact that it's much more slim and sleek and doesn't get in the way. Now, just like in previous years, the S Pen does not work on the outside display, which is kind of a bummer. I feel like with this type of phone, it would be great if it worked on the outside for quick notes. And then of course you can open up your device and utilize it on the inside as well. And so it does work 
great, very responsive. So the S Pen is very simple. It's very slim, as you can see here, uh, very small, a lot smaller than last year's S Pen. This S Pen doesn't require any charging, anything like that. You can see it hasn't detected anything about the S Pen yet. Even if I hit the button or get relatively close, hitting the button on the side doesn't do anything. But tapping on the screen once lets the device know that there's an S Pen nearby, and then the button will work from uh, a close proximity. And so if I'm like maybe a half inch away, I can use the button and it actually works. Or of course I can tap on the screen as well. Very responsive, very fast. I don't notice much of a difference between this S Pen and the S Pen in a Galaxy S23 Ultra. Although this one is flat and maybe not the most enjoyable to hold in comparison to last year's because last year's was bigger. And I have to say, I don't mind the S23 Ultra S Pen being as tiny as it is because it's, it's stores inside the phone and you don't get that on uh, the Fold 5. So the Fold 5, I definitely like this version of the S Pen over last year's with that large hump that you have to slide the S Pen and then try and grab it. And if you put the S Pen in the wrong way, it's harder to get it in and out. They did a great job with the S Pen implementation here on this case. And so it's likely that I probably will go with this case because I like having an S Pen. And even though some of the other cases provide storage for the S Pen, those cases are just a bit too big for me. So my choice is going to be the Samsung case with the S Pen. But I have to say, if I didn't care about the S Pen, I most likely would be going with the case from Caseology because it's a great looking case, nice design, and it fits the device well. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. Which case was your favorite? Make sure to check out those links in the description and click on them so you can go and see pricing, color options, and all that good stuff. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful and subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when I put out new videos. We'll see you back in another one soon. Take care.